everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, a Sunday Politics, live on China's television. I'm Sean sure Kimaloye in Abuja. As we navigate a complex and landscape of current affairs of our nation, our focus tonight is squarely on the economic pulse of Nigeria. Over recent months, we've witnessed a mountain tide of concern over the relentless surge in commodity prices, casting shadow of uh, uncertainty over the livelihoods of millions. From the bustling streets of Lagos to the tranquil villages of the hinterland, the resonance of this economic turmoil is palpable, underscoring the urgency of our discourse. But the economic narrative doesn't unfold in isolation. It is intertwined with the fabric of social unrest and grassroots agitation against the backdrop of rising prices we are witnessing a groundswell of discontent culminating in the planned nationwide street demonstrations by the organized labor. This looming specter of protest serves as a stark reminder of the profound socioeconomic fissures that threaten to fracture the bedrock of our nation's stability. Tonight, we'll delve into the heart of these pressing issues, seeking clarity, insight, and above all, solutions. We understand that President Bola Tinobu has met with uh, very eminent members of the private sector at the presidential villa in Abuja. Also, the federal government has met with members of the organized labor over the planned nationwide process. And the lawyer to the labor union, Mr. Femi Falano, has asked the attorney general of the federation, Mr. Latif Agwemi, to provide security for the demonstrators. He's replying the attorney general, who had earlier wrote him warning against plans to hit the street by the labor groups. The Minister of Justice said, since the federal government was working on fulfilling items on the memorandum of understanding signed between the parties, there won't be any need for the street protest. Well, barring any last minute change, the NSC will on Tuesday, February 27th, and Wednesday, February the 28th, protest following the dramatic hike in the prices of goods and services due to the removal of fuel subsidy and the free fall of Nara, amongst others. The human rights lawyer, in a letter dated February 24, and addressed to the Attorney General of the Federation, he said, uh, quoting Section 83, Subsection 4 of the Police Establishment Act, empowers the Minister of Justice to provide security cover for the protesters. And that uh, is a portion of what Mr. Falan said. Why we'll have advise the members of the, uh, of the NLC to conduct the rallies scheduled on February 27 and 28 uh, in a peaceful manner, the Inspector General of Police to provide uh, adequate protection to uh, the demonstrators. Those are some of the words of Mr. Falanum to the Attorney General. Of course, I will show you the letter written from the Office of the Attorney General to Mr. Falano, who is a lawyer to the Labour. But it doesn't look like uh, that uh, protest has been ruled out. It might happen, but there are talks with the federal government. In all of these are issues of agitation. There are a lot of people who are uh, disenchanted by what is going on in the country. But the question is, what is the way out of all of these quagmire? Uh, the, 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 uh, the exchange rate the prices of commodities, all of these are getting a lot of people really concerned. Tonight, I'm being joined by a former governor of Ekiti State who is going to be uh, giving us insight into really the way out. He was one of the promoters of the President Bola Tinobu presidency ahead of the 2023 presidential election. Ms. Adele Fawashi joins us live from Lagos. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us tonight on the program. Sure. It's nice to be here. Let me get your view, uh, Governor Fauci, on what is going on in the nation today. Uh, you are one of the promoters of President Bola Tinobu, and you are one of those who believe is his turn, and who also believes that the president has the capacity to fix the myriad of challenges confronted by the nation. What is going on right now? Well, to Nigerians, it's good evening from here. I want to thank you, Shiro, for 
reaching out to give me the opportunity to share my feelings and moments with Nigerians and to let you know that uh, it is sad that uh, it got to this stage in our history. And um, it's unfortunate that Nigerians found themselves in this situation of hunger, so to speak. I want to plead with them that uh, every reasonable leadership must identify with their pains, must share their pains, and it's uh, a thing of concern. But let us lay a foundation for how we got here. I became governor in 2014, in, and I was privileged to serve under Governor President Jonathan and President uh, Buhari. And Nigerians, I'm sure, will not forget, forget my efforts, my position, to ensure that we don't get where to where we are today. I, on every opportunity, at every opportunity, I speak my mind to, the, to power. I told President Buhari, when everybody believed that a savior came, I said, this is not a savior. This is not a savior. It was a government of total regret. And they took us this far. Today, the consequences of yesterday is manifesting and it's so disturbing and sad that it's in this period of the presidency of President uh, Tinubu. And I want to say that um, one thing bothers my heart, and I'll come to that, but I want to say that Nigerians know very well, without, without playing to the gallery, that the current, and I'm not watching brief for anybody. I'm not watching brief for President Tinubu. And I want to start again to tell you I am not a member of the APC, and I will never be a member. The moment I, this politics does not go the way I feel it should go. At this age, I must step aside willfully and do the right thing and speak from the side of everybody, both the government and the Nigerian people. Let me quickly tell you that President Tinubu inherited a dead economy. Whatever we say, there must be a president at a given time. President, the president of France, Charles de Gaulle, came at a very turbulent time for change. For, 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 for the French people. And the coming of President Tinubu is sincerely at a time of need for Nigeria. These are very rough terrains, very rough times. And I remember listening to the former Minister of Finance, the lady who was a former Minister of Finance, said very expressly that we service Nigerian debts with 83% of our income. This was about five years ago or four years ago. If you are servicing the debt of Nigeria by 83% of your income, and after the four, five years, four years, a president called Tinubu came and faced that economy. What, 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 what if, the, if the foundations were faulty, what would the righteous do? I was listening to somebody who said to me, that where is the magic? Tell us the magic that they said Tinubu did in Lagos. <laughs> you cannot compare the current situation in Nigeria and what he did in Lagos. There are two different things, and I'm in position to talk like this because I was a governor in this country when President Tinubu was a governor. I was privileged to be in leadership, and I understand how it works. Let me say to you, and to Nigerians, it is disturbing, but it, this is not the fault of the current president of Nigeria. So, Governor Fawashi, if I may jump in quickly. Yeah. So, if you say that this is not a fault of this government, uh, but th that those who will argue differently, we will say, look, it's been almost nine months of President Tinubu in the saddle, and uh, he knew and he said that Nigerians should ask him the question because he bet. He worked, he asked for the job, and he said he needs to do it. But that concern that the manner and the approach in which this government, under his leadership, is going, that things are deteriorating. Or if you were saying 
Do not bring Bala Tinubu, who is the, in, uh, the leader of this country. Blame another person who is out of power. It's not justified or justifiable. Um, for that, your seat, politics today, when they talk about channel television, I am not, I'm not speaking to praise you, but channel television, obviously, is quite proud of this program. If you have run this program aground, no man will come and wake this program overnight. It takes time to, to turn around things. It's a common saying to destroy so is, but to turn around is not an easy experience. Let me tell you that, like I told you again, I am not going to patronize anybody. I have said it on this television program several days. I don't want an appointment from this government to say that is why I want to patronize anybody. But look at the eight years of President Buhari, what will be left of a country like Nigeria as of today? Even if Tinubu means well, where do we place the dead? Even if Tinubu means well and wants to do the magic, where we live, how we live six. Let me quickly say this to Nigerians. They might not be aware of this. And you probably should, might not be aware of this. There are loans taken in the Buaris administration. Some for 50 years with moratorium that will not start paying in 50 years. Some for 20 years. Children yet unborn will face this kind of situation. The last administration has launched this country. But the only thing I want to say to President Tinubu, without fear, favor, and let, the president should stop praising President Buhari. I watched live television program of the president telling the Nigerians that President Tino, uh, former President Buhari did well, served, uh, served the nation. Let me say to you, that will cause a confusion in the minds of Nigerians. Yes, he's a member of your party. He's, a, he's your leader. Sir, there are so many presentations we can make without celebrating a man who has put Nigerians into this predicament. There are things we dare not be saying. You can visit him, you can greet him, you can love him, you can appreciate him. That is personal to the president with all due respect. Coming to the television and saying President Putin, President Bo, former President Buhari did this, it was a blessing to Nigeria. Buhari is not a blessing to Nigeria, I would say. Your Excellency, with all due respect to you. You remember that I, I was courageous enough to confront President Tinu, President Buhari when he was in office. And with all due respect to your person, I say to you, President Buhari was not a blessing to Nigeria. It drew us back to 50 years of our history. Today, you are engaging individuals who are seen in public actions, even in your office. I am not saying this to patronize to your excellency. If you are not doing it the right way, we will say it. It's unfortunate. In your course of your own, you run into murky waters. Stay out of President Buhari's mess. The situation in Nigeria today, let it be clear to Nigerians that, yes, I am the president. I asked for this job. I meant well. The economy that I met was a dead economy. Nobody can deny that. There's no miracle you can do in nine months. Even if you are doing that miracle, let me say this to Nigerians as well. Nigerians are part of this mess. We are all guilty of this mess. The, the, the kind of government you have is a function of the people. We present in Ubi in every location in Nigeria to... to defend, to protect Nigerians, he has to rely on a number of people. He has to rely on individuals. Such individuals must be called to account. Is this President Tinubu that is driving one way most of the times? Is it President Tinubu that is taking kickbacks at the airport? Is it President Tinubu that is doing a lot of vices that is in our country? It is time for Nigerians to, to change our style, our conduct, our attitude. You can't win a battle when we are equally not doing the right thing. 
You can't fight, fight a government, fight any government, when you as Nigerians, are, we as Nigerians, are not doing the Dr. right thing. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me jump in quickly. Yeah, so, I mean, that, that are those who will debate the approach of President Tunubu and will say his policies are perhaps the reasons why we are here today. And mm -hmm. one of such is a former vice president and presidential candidate of the PDP, Atiku Abubakar. There was a statement released today by the former vice president. And let me read to you a portion of that statement. And he's basically advising President Tunubu to walk the talk. And he's asking him to take a lesson from the president of Argentina, President Tunubu, got into office in May of last year. In the same year, December, the president of Argentina got into office. He said both of them met a country that was troubled economically, but they are approaching things differently. Let me read a portion of what Atiku Abubaka said earlier today. He says, the example set by President Milei are the requirement of leadership in a time when the economy has begun to fail the expectations of the people. The reforms so far implemented by the Tunubu administration are ad hoc and hurriedly put together without proper review, as is unlike Argentina's Milei, who is sequencing his reforms. President Milei anticipates the after reform shocks and admits that things will be tough for the people, but is fully prepared for the aftershock and has in place mitigating pills. He walks the talk, he makes sacrifices himself by giving up perks of office. It is not business as usual for the presidency where the people are called upon to make sacrifices. Argentina runs a lean government by reducing the number of ministries, privatizing nearly 40 state-owned enterprises, and reducing wasteful spending. Conversely, Tinubu in Nigeria increased the number of ministers and ministries and is spending enormous resources renovating houses for himself, his deputy, and the first lady. That is nothing short of Nero playing fiddle with Rome while Rome is on fire. Those are the thoughts of former president, former vice president Atiku Abubakar, who believes President Tinubu is not doing the right thing. He thinks that some of his approach to governance are ad hoc and hurriedly uh, taken. Well, so I thank you very much for reading that piece by, president, by the former vice president. The first question, uh, before I ask, I put in the first question, is I want to say to you, to, it is all easier said than done. The question to ask again is, it's easy, it is easy to criticize. Every nation has its own peculiarity. In Argentina, do they have Boko Haram? In Argentina, how many languages are in Argentina? Today, you still see Nigerians fighting and talking about uh, we are Fulani, we are Igbo, we are Yoruba, we are Usa, we are Efik. There is a lot to contend with for a Nigerian president. I don't know what is happening in Argentina, so I don't want to say what I don't know about. But let me know, let me tell you, even if the Lord Jesus Christ or uh, Muhammad come to be president of Nigeria, they will say the same thing. Let us talk about realities here. This is nine months. When President Buhari was here, there were no ministers for five months. This man got in ministers in two months. When there were allegations against some of the ministers, he took action. Me, I don't want to go the issues of APC and PGP criticizing. When you criticize people, you must equally give, offer a voice to tell them what to do. In the instance case, a country servicing its economy, servicing its debt by, by, by 83% or 85%, what miracle will anybody do? We must talk to realities, not impossibilities. The case of Nigeria is quite different from the case of Argentina. When you see people, when they talk, look at the angle from where they are talking from. And I want to appreciate the former vice president for at least saying, some, saying something. He has to say something. He has to show leadership. Because the strength of, of democracy is in the opposition. So President Tinubu should learn from what he has said anyway. But what I don't know, I will not come and defend here. But I know Nigeria has its own peculiarity. 
is there are a lot of things going on in our country. Even if you bring an angel, they will tell you that angel is not from Kaduna, it's not from Ibadan, it's not from Sukoto. This is how difficult a country Nigeria has structured is not easy. And let me say to you, what you don't have, you can't give. We can't deny the current situation our country is going through, except we are trying to, when they discuss Nigeria relatively with America, I say, don't waste your time. You can't discuss an, uh, somebody who is five years with somebody who is 35 years. America is far gone to compare America's democracy with our democracy. But what I'm saying in effect is that the current situation in Nigeria is unfortunate. It is not the fault of the current president, but the current president should do more. Should do more. Should try his best. Let me tell you, there's no magic anybody will do when it is purely impossible for you to reconcile the situation you are finding yourself. So, yourself. Governor Fauci, let, let's so take, me, let, let me ask you just one or two, uh, two questions, basically, about some of uh, uh, the criticisms on, of the Bola Tunubu government. That those who believe that, yes, uh, almost all the presidential candidate campaigned to say they will remove uh, subsidy on fuel, but the manner in which the president went about it, going on the first day without necessarily laying foundation upon which, when it happened, the aftershocks and how Nigerians were going to receive it, uh, the protest that the labor is going to be embarking on next week is premised on the aftershock of what the president said on the 29th of May. That those who believe that that was the first misstep, good idea, but badly executed. Don't you think so? I don't think so. All the former pres key former presidential candidates said we will remove subsidies. They, they didn't hide it. And at the end of the day, the implementation or application is now limited to individuals. And don't forget, President Tinubu met a budget without the inclusion of fuel subsidy after June. So what will he do? You see, let us try and be objective. Are you saying, and Governor Fauci, that in the present day Nigeria, Abola Tunubu is the best man in whatever case. As though if uh, uh, Peter Obi or at, uh, Atiku Abubakar or Adewale Adebayo or Malika Ado Ibrahim or any of those, uh, or Wale Shora, any of those presidential candidates, if they got into office, nothing would have changed. Is that what you're saying? It's only God that knows the best. But in the context of democracy, and Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu, won an election, he must act in the office of a president, and is acting in the of office of a president. If any of these candidates had become president of Nigeria, would they be cutting dollar? Would they be printing dollar? Because I don't understand. Would they change the attitudes of Nigerians overnight? This is a process of building, not a process of breaking down. But, or, man, or are you saying this, Governor Fayoshe, because you are one of the promoters of Governor, I mean, President Tunubu, and now that Nigerians are agitated, uh -huh. is that the reason why you are saying? Because in, in the words of some Nigerians, they believe that the government has failed them in the last nine months they got into office. Prices of commodities have skyrocketed. The prices of fuel has gone up. The prices of food have gone up. Virtually everything you touch in Nigeria, the prices are unbearable. Hardship is very much pinching every Nigerian that you ask the question. Is that the reason why you're saying what you're saying tonight, Governor Fauci? So I, I am not a promoter. I'm not in position to promote President Bola Metinubu. But I am a promoter of fairness fairness and do, doing the right thing in our country that after President Buhari, the power must shift to the south. That becomes very, very inevitable for me to say. I said it on my Twitter handle until tomorrow, I have no apologies. And I'm saying to you, when a woman loses her husband, you will now see the woman start crying. I wish this man were to be alive. But when the man was alive, 
he was shouting he was not a good man. Today, if you say Bola Tinubu should go, who tells you it's not a devil that will come? What I have to say to you, there will always be a president on the seat of the office of the president in Nigeria. All of us are in government. I'm in government. I might not be in Asu Rock. I am in position to check the essences of the people around me. If we all change our attitude as Nigerians, what can Bola Ahmed do to stop people from doing the wrong things that they are doing? People pack anyhow. People don't pay their bills. People don't do this. Is it Bola Ahmed? You know, if you don't have your wife sleeping at home or no children, is Bola Ahmed? You know, or what if it's Atiku, then it's Atiku. If it's Ubi, then it's Ubi. What can anybody do? Oh, I have no interest because I'm not a member of their party. But well, you promoted this. him. And you, I'm you asked your people, uh, Nigerians I, I, I in your, no, in your circle no of influence no to vote for him. And so the question is that this is I what you no sold regrets. to Nigerians. Can Nigerians further listen to you in whatever you are advocating, when you advocated for this, and this is what they are getting. Those who are facing the hardship will be asking you the question, especially your, your supporters and those me, who loved what you say. So let me say to you again, I acknowledge that Nigerians are going through a lot. I, it's regrettable. I share moments with them, particularly those who died in the course of distribution of rice. A lot of people that uh, have been adversely affected, I sympathize with them. But so far, so good. Considering what Bola Ahmed, you know, who the president of Nigeria inherited and our diversity, put all this together, the gentleman is trying his best. Governor Fauci, how do you the react to those? Just a moment. How do you react to those who, are, who want the president to reverse the policy on petroleum subsidy, at least for now, to be able to stabilize the policy? Where will he get the money to be paying the subsidy? Yeah, those who are saying Where that the subsidy is being be paid, paid somehow through the back doors. IMF, IMF muted that idea too, that it's being paid somehow through the back okay. doors. Let, 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 let us equally say it's paid through the back door. Is that not still fair? Then for that fuel to go to 1,000, 1,005, if it's in, in, in its wisdom, He's using all that he can put in place to change or to assist to ensure this hardship does not go beyond what it is. You must commend him. There's no perfect man in this world. Then let me tell people, particularly about the strike or the, the protest of the Nigerian labor, they are entitled to protest. They are entitled to show grievance. They are entitled to do to speak on behalf of the Nigerian Labor Union. But let me say to you, let me say to you, let us be careful. Let us be careful. If the, these rallies and these protests are taken over by hoodlums, we have no other country if anything goes wrong. In life, we always see the beginning of a problem. We should be careful of what may come out of it. A lot of people. Yeah, this, is, this is perhaps my final question to you and the way we wrap up this conversation. Going forward, our nation is in their need of urgent attention. Say that we are in some kind of an emergency situation or an emergency ward of a hospital needing a critical attention and every attention that we get will impact on our future, present and the later future. What do you think that the president needs to do to calm nerves and to change things around? Just about 60 seconds, we need to close now. Let me tell you that we need to cooperate with the president. We need to show some level of understanding. There is no miracle worker here. The minute ago you told me, I had you said that Nigerians are saying he's building a house for himself, he's building for his wife. That house, is it not the Nigerian villa? The house of the president. So when we talk, we don't bring in emotion. My advice to the president is stay focused. Remember, you gave your words to Nigerians to make this country better than you made it. Please stay focused. Don't be distracted. I have once been a governor. I know how tough it was, especially on the seat of a governor of a place like it, where there's no money. 
Today, Nigeria doesn't have the resources. When they talk about CBN, where would the CBN get the dollar? Every Nigerian is guilty about this dollar. People go and buy dollar and keep the dollar. It's not as if the dollar is functional. They are all speculating buying the dollar. And the moment you are buying, the laws of demand and supply will take this, this currency off. What can the president do about that? It is good for him to work on it, but it is equally good for us Nigerians all right. to change our attitude and our approach. And lastly, the president needs to address the issue of the security architecture of our country. There are a lot to be done because the spate of crime too has to be addressed. When people are over-recycled, there will be issues. Intelligence report matters to this government. Right. We are lacking in intelligence. That is the truth. And this intelligence must be worked upon. All right. Thank you. Well, my governor of Ekiti State, Ayodele Fayoshe, thank you so much, Your Excellency, for your time tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, indeed. <laughs>